One of our favorite sponsors is back with us. Sunset Lake CBD. CBD. Yeah. If you're looking for CBD that actually does what CBD is supposed to do, look no further than our friends over at Sunset Lake. Let me break it down. Break it down, Mel. They're sustainably farmed, meaning they avoid pesticides and use sustainable farming practices to preserve the land for future generations. One. Two, farm to table. They ship the CBD products straight from their door in Vermont directly to your door, wherever you're at. Oh, that's cool. And third party tested. They test everything with the third party to ensure quality, dosage, and safety. You got to go over and check out sunsetlakecbd.com. They have so many products. Break it down for them, Apple. Well, they've got some new stuff going on. Like they, they always had pre rolls, but now they got really cool packaging for it. And you can get CBD pre roll flights of all their flavors. You can get the heavy hitter flight that also throws in some of their Keith blunts. They have a new CBD recovery body lotion. I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. And what was the other? The, the other one with Arnica. Yeah. Extra strength muscle rub, 3,000 milligram with 5% lidocaine. So look, oh, yeah, lidocaine. if you're sore, this is the stuff you want to rub on your body to make those aches and pains go away. They even have CBD infused coffee. So you can have coffee without the little jitter that you get from caffeine and you have it in the morning and you start your day off right. Your body feels lubricated. Or you're, you know, you're going to sleep good. Yeah. It's, and also they have... If you kind of forget to reorder, they've got subscriptions. And they're given the No Simple Road family 20% off. 20% off. Put in the promo, promo code. code NSR20 when you're checking out at sunsetlakecbd.com. You're going to get 20% off your entire order. NSR20. And don't forget those cute little gummy bears. That's right. Sunsetlakecbd.com, one of our favorite sponsors, is back. Hey everyone, Chris Pandolfi from the infamous String Dusters here to let you know that my podcast Inside the Musician's Brain is back on the airwaves for season four, which means it's time once again to get deep with influential musicians from all across the musical landscape to really understand and translate the lessons of success, failure, inspiration, and hard work that are behind the music and the artists that we love. My guests this season include Rachel Price from Lake Street Dives, Sam Bush, Chris Wood, Chris Funk from The Decemberists, Lindsay Liu, MC Taylor from His Golden Messenger, and more. Check us out, and thanks for listening. We're so excited to tell you a bit about today's sponsor, Music Masters Collective. They are a nonprofit organization that produces unique music events, providing opportunities for fans and artists to meet and collaborate in an inspired and creative atmosphere. Music Masters Collective events give you the opportunity to learn from world-class musicians like Otil Burbridge, Steve Earle, Richard Thompson, former members of the band, the Mel Carton Kids, Nikki Glaspy, the Fab Foe, and Sean Colvin, and so many more. At an event like the Milk Carton Kids Sad Song Summer Camp happening this July, you can expect immersive classes, evenings of entertainment, excellent food, and a space for a lucky group of folks to learn, co-write, workshop, and perform with like-minded peers, all with the guidance of Kenneth Pattengale, Joey Ryan, and some of their favorite songwriters. This all-inclusive week in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York is guaranteed to be magical. Scholarships are available, and spots are extremely limited. So visit www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple to learn more. That's www.sadsongsummercamp.com forward slash simple. Check it out. know that music can accelerate child brain development and strengthen intellectual emotional and motor skills as well as overall literacy did you guys know that i I did not it kind of makes sense though yeah it totally makes sense bringing music into the classroom can help kids explore the mind body connection and become comfortable with self-expression sadly many children's music programs are lacking in the resources they need to let kids explore this creative space that's why osiris is happy to partner with the mockingbird foundation Founded in 1996, the Mockingbird Foundation is a volunteer-run nonprofit organization dedicated to improving access to music education for America's youth. 
That's pretty cool. It is. is. Each year, the foundation awards grants to dozens of music education programs and funds those grants through a combination of fundraising, publishing, and the curtain of fish dot or in the curation sorry the curtain i'm stoned the curation <laughs> the of fish.net <laughs> one of the earliest internet fan communities mockingbird is entirely volunteer with no staff no salary and no office so every dollar really does make a difference in providing children's music programs with the staffing instruments and support they need the foundation gives over 100 to 150 thousand dollars every year in grants if you guys want to learn more Visit mbird.org. That's M B I R D dot org. And if you Google Mockingbird Foundation, like I did the other day, and you get some religious Christian group, that's the wrong thing. It's mbird.org. That's where you got to go if you want to find out more. No Simple Road is part of Osiris Media. Osiris Media. Osiris. There's a lot going on, you guys. Yeah, there is. They're freaking <laughs> blowing up. They really are. Politic, politics. Oh. That's actually a good way politics, to say it. Politics. That is. The Politics of Truth is a new Osiris original podcast focusing on the 2020 presidential campaign. Hosted by Bob Crawford of the Avit Brothers, the mission of the show is to connect with our nation's most reliable journalists and socially conscious musicians with the goal of empowering our listening audience when they cast their votes in the upcoming primaries and general elections. So check that out. That is going to be something else. Freak Flag Flying is out there. That is with Steve Silverman talking with his buddy and friend David Crosby, um, talking about his experiences with people like Bob Dylan, Jerry Garcia, Jefferson Airplane, Steely Dan, his years with Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and all the stuff. Those are out now at osirispod.com forward slash freak flag. And I said that without blowing it. Yeah, that was pretty good. Nice. Yeah. You like that? I'm getting better. Well, we were in this. anticipation to see if you could make it. And also, guys, don't forget to check out the Ear Floss podcast. They are a uh, music history podcast that comes out about every two weeks. And each episode looks at a different band or musician. This is not part of the Osiris media, but um, they are friends of No Simple Road. They are not genre specific. So you won't just hear about jam bands. You'll hear everything from Tool to... Bing Crosby. Crosby. No, that is that is not that? true. Why that was a that? that was a bad post that came out. Actually, oh. there is no Bing Crosby episode, but everything from like Tool bad. to Lizzo, all kinds of stuff. So go check them out. That's Ear Floss Podcast. And don't forget to listen to all the awesome podcasts on Osiris Media. <laughs> Guess what, guys? What? Who's sponsoring us? Who Ooh. is? Define Premium Cannabis. Define. Ooh, I Ooh. like Ooh. Redefine. Ooh. In your face. Define <laughs> has two locations uh, in Hillsborough and one in Forest Grove. Not two locations in Hillsboro. One location in Hillsboro, one location locations. in Forest Grove, two locations in total. Total. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they have. For you stoners <laughs> out there. That's oh. right. And so for you stoners and, you know, maybe players, whatever, whoever you are, they have whatever you need at Define. They have tinctures. They've got topicals. They've got flour. And when we say flour, we mean bud, weed, whatever you want to say. And but they just have a really sweet atmosphere. And they have chill vibes in there. You go in there, you're like, you know what? I want to try this like new weird lube that I heard about. And they're like, come over here. This is the... And they tell you all about it. Wow. And tell us all about it, Apple. Yeah, tell us tell about, us about the, the weird lube. lube. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's something the, we don't have. <laughs> you guys don't have it anymore? No. Oh, well, when I was there, you guys used to. But they have the massage oils. It just never sold. What about the massage oils? They don't sell. We what have some it? massage oil. Okay. Yeah, it's not a big seller. I don't really? know. Well, okay. I heard well it, you guys I heard are underusing that stuff. in town. But it no, you know what it is? You need people that are really using it. Yeah. Because then they'll want to sell it. But you know what, you guys? For all of you out there that live in the Portland area, if you go out to Hillsborough or Forest Grove and you say that you're part of the No Simple Road family and then you're in Define and you ask for Apple or one of the other bud tenders, you tell them you're part of the family, you're going to get 10% off your purchase in a... Free t-shirt. I'm, I'm a little mellow right. today, right? <laughs> free t-shirt. Free t-shirt. Free t-shirt. But you will get that. Woo -woo. And Define is part of the No Simple Road family sponsor. Yeah. So support them, you guys. Yeah. Check out Define. Yeah. Swing on in and see me, and we will get you all set up, and you can take care of your head. What? Well, what are you harumphing huh? about over there, mister? No, I wasn't harumphing. I oh. went, huh. 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 
About what? I was looking hot because I was looking at the cute stuff on Shop Tour Bus. How they got Shop, the Shop Tour, Tour, Tour Bus. bus. <laughs> oh, wow, tell oh, me all about oh, it, wow. Apple. Yeah. Wow, you scared me. So, oh, <laughs> Gosh, you know, I'm I was just looking at the cute toddler tees they have, oh, the China Cat. Yeah. So cool. Cool. And toddlers, and looks like they got some new tapes. People, that's awesome. People keep the tapes coming to them so they can continue getting out those awesome, one of a kind, Grateful Dead inspired lyrical boxes. Look, if you guys are new to the show and you're hearing this for the first time i'm gonna break it down real fast for you shop tour bus.com online or at shop tour bus on instagram is the coolest place to get grateful dead inspired merchandise they got hoodies tees uh sweatshirts baby onesies all with grateful dead what stickers stickers sometimes they got the pins all with mm-hmm. Grateful Dead inspired artwork on them. This comes to you in a hand designed one of a kind box with a Grateful Dead lyric on the inside, a bunch of little extras, and each purchase has a genuine cassette bootleg inside your box at no extra charge and a pencil to spool that tape with should it get eaten by your antiquated cassette player. Yep. And because they're part of the No Simple Road family, they're giving all of you out there free shipping. If you put in the promo code No Simple Road, no Road, they will hook you up with free shipping. And if you put a note in the box at checkout and you want to give a special note to somebody out there, they will hook your box up with your little note as well. So like those cute Valentine's presents. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, you could hurry and, and hook that up. I mean, real yeah, hurry, no time hurry, is short. Real fast. But hurry real, could, real fast. You could pull it off. So head over to shoptourbus.com online or at shoptourbus on Instagram and get more, more than, than you bargain, bargain for. for. Guess where we're going? Skull and Roses. Yes. Oh, Yay, Skull and Roses. April 2nd. Through the 5th, 2020 at the Ventura County Fairgrounds in Ventura County, California. Such a beautiful place. No Simple Road is the official podcast of Skull and Rose. Check out this line. Official podcast. Listen to this. Billy and the Kids. This is the first time they've played in, I I can't even remember how long. It's been a while. It's been a long time since they rock and roll. (laughs) O'Teal and Friends. Get it? See what I I did there? Voodoo Dead. Melvin Seals and Jerry Garcia and JGB. Uh, Jackie Green, Keller Williams and Grateful Grass, Circles Around the Sun, Ghost Light, Grateful Shred, David Nelson Band, Stu Allen and Mars Hotel, The Rooster Conspiracy, Midnight North, Pink Docking Fish are Dead, Cubensis, Full Moon Alice, Jerry's Middle Finger, Dave Harrington's Merry Pranksters, Big Steve and the Ass Bites from Hell, The Alligators. I, I'm, You guys, if you haven't decided to buy tickets yet, you should buy now. Electric Waistband. Roots of Creation's Grateful Dub, Marcus Razak, Shred is Dead, Extra Ticket featuring Dave A. Bear, David Gans, The Noodles, China Cats, and Catfish John. And check this out. Catfish John is the Grateful Dead tribute band from our hometown of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, snap. So That's so many bands. <clears throat> yeah. That's, That's so bands. many bands. Well, it's also yeah. four mm-hmm. days of amazing Grateful Dead music. Yeah. yeah it's spread out. Goes, That's, wait, one sec. Math. A lot of bands. 40, uh, nope. 72. 72 hours, thank you. 12, 48, nope, that's three days, 72 hours. Jeez, how many days? I don't know. But 96 it's not hours. Days. Days. Well, that's true. It's a lot of hours of Grateful Dead music. So many hours. You guys go to skullandroses.com, pick yourself up tickets, or you can go to www.nosimpleroad.com, and there's a link for tickets on there. It's worth your time to come hang out on the beach with the entire Grateful Dead family and No Simple Road, and listen to amazing music, and eat delicious food, and shop at a badass shakedown, and hang out with your family. Did we mention it's right by the beach? I mean, right by it's the beach. It's literally on, walk, you can walk to the beach. Like it's a minute to the beach. Less than a five minute walk from the can, stage you know to what? the I, beach. I didn't uh, do it during the show last year. Mm-hmm. Can you hear the music while you're on the beach? You can. Yeah. You can until you get right down because yeah, it's a rock. Until, when you get close to the rocks, you can hear the rocks tumbling, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, while you're on it's the like beach, the echoey. beach takes over. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. All that right. so awesome. See, you guys need to come to Skull and Roses. So www.skullandroses.com or www.nosimperroad.com. Pick yourself up some tickets and come hang out April 2nd through the 5th. It's going to be dope. Yeah. We ain't lying. 
Hey, what's up? This is Mike Fenoya, host of Amigos Podcast here on the Osiris Network. What is Amigos Podcast? Well, I am a stand-up comedian, writer for True TV's Impractical Jokers, and a music freak. So I invite my pals to come talk music, comedy, and everything in between. So uh, if you want to come hang, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Tell Ryder to shut up, Apple. That's not nice at all. No. Keep talking, Ryder. You can talk all you want around this table. Uh, Hello. (laughs) Hey, now. (laughs) Hey, now, No Simple Road family. What's up? Hi, Mel. Hi, Steamroller. Hi. Hi, Apple. (laughs) Hi, Aaron. How's it going? It's going pretty well. So check this out, you guys. It's been a good day. It has been a good day. Back in the day, though, like... Before there was telephones and electricity and all that stuff, human beings would like hang out in tribes, right? And so we're told. So we're told. And hey, unless no. unless there was like aliens and, and elevators and airplanes and all that stuff back then, but I don't know. But what they tell me is that <laughs> human beings hung out in like in tribes, right? And they didn't have TVs and they didn't have radios. So when they wanted to hang out and have fun, what they would do is they would either like play music together by banging on stuff or there would be one or two people in the tribe that were like the storyteller right so they would all like gather around the fire and this person would tell stories and then these stories would like get handed down and handed down and they became like myths and legends and all that stuff over time right well now we have like electricity and telephones and all this cool stuff And a lot of people say that it has made us disconnected in a lot of ways because we're all in our phones all the time and we don't pay attention to each other and nobody's even watching while they're driving. And you guys get where I'm going with that, right? But I beg to differ. I thought of this while we were tripping at Dark Star Orchestra the other night and I didn't want to share it with any of you until we got here doing the podcast. Think about this. The internet is the digital equivalent of the tribe for us for this podcast like with the people that listen are the tribe right and the show itself is the fire and we are all gathered around the fire telling stories that will be handed down as myth and legend in the future except it won't even be handed down it'll just keep being exactly what it is that's crazy it's even more pure yeah Yep, because they can hear it from the first person's mouth yep. over and over again. Mm-hmm. And For forever. And or that, as long as the internet's yeah, a thing. There's a recording. This is a recording. No, but that's really cool. Mm-hmm. And I, I never thought of it like that. And in the middle of the show the other night, that came to me. Boom. I was like, whoa, we're the ones telling the story around the campfire now. And here we are. And this week, we're telling a story with... Chris Dyer, guys. You guys, this oh is my gosh. you're gonna enjoy this one. I <laughs> he blew my mind. Yeah. He, he he spoke like the ocean. It was like so easy to like vibe on. I don't know. Like it, his Why do you say the ocean? I want to hear spoke like because huge. like yeah. is calm but it, not it, it like it was like if you were riding a wave, like oh, if okay. you were sitting okay. on a like on boogie a boat. board or a, something even more close to the water. A surfboard. Because and it's got a like, fluidity. Yeah, it was very to fluid it, like, and rhythmic and easy to the, listen to. Just before we all came in the house, you guys were still out on the porch and I was in here getting set up. And I just put on the middle of the podcast and just started letting it play for a minute. And I totally got sucked in. Like I had never listened to it before. I was like, "This is super interesting," and then I was like, "Oh shit, this we need to be doing stuff." Well, right now. nobody's ever heard Chris's voice. I, I we had I had like videos, but he's just got a very his accent is very calming, very smooth. Yeah, I don't know if you asked him, I think he'd probably say he doesn't have an accent. Well, he doesn't. <laughs> Get what I mean? Come on. What do you mean? I don't know. 
<laughs> what do you mean to be evil? What do I mean? Do you mean? I, I I would imagine if I had an English accent and you They're guys not didn't. accents anymore because we're all over the world. Or are they all accents? Yeah. You, I, I don't all, think I have, I have an accent. I don't think I would hear mm. myself speaking with an English accent. No, but I have an accent. What is it? It's this. What I'm doing right now. This whole thing. <laughs> what do you, happening what do you right call that? Second. It's an American accent. You're in, Okay. Is that what the people in Israel told you? I don't know. Oh, okay. If if you guys, no, no, you ask the people, wasn't no, you ask the people anybody. in Israel they, for an American accent, they give you like a, they gave me like a, uh, uh, like surfer dude, California. <laughs> oh, hey well, man, how's it going, oh, so man? That's what they gave. I was okay. like, okay, right. it's America. California represents the United States. I guess a, so. That's where a lot of, times, a lot of um, Hollywood, Hollywood uh, tourists. That's like their first encounter mm. with California. Makes sense with America. Yeah, movies, Hollywood, the whole. If you guys um, aren't familiar with who Chris Dyer is, he is a extremely magnificently talented visionary artist on the level of an Alex Gray or Android Jones or someone like that. Uh, I first came across Chris's art um, probably in the lot somewhere and then uh, saw him on Instagram and was immediately drawn to what I saw and I knew that that was somebody that we needed to talk to that we wanted to have on the show and uh, reached out and we finally got it together. And what you're going to hear here in a little bit is the culmination of that conversation. But first, how's your week, Mel? Mm, It was an excellent week. I had a super, super fun date night um, at... Wait, where did we go? <laughs> <laughs> so memorable. It was so, so fun. fun. <laughs> so where fun. Were we? It was so fun. The pure fun of I it fell blasted uh, the entire memory that Mary out of mixture, her head. <laughs> that Mary mixture got me like, whoa. <laughs> where'd you go? Come on, no, where'd, where did we go? We went to go see DSO, Dark Star Orchestra, mm. you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were talking you about something like else. I thought she night. was too. I was what? like, wow. What'd you guys think I was talking about? I don't know, like, like a date night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that you and Aaron date, date night. night or was it not a date night? Aaron? It, it was a total date night. Yeah, we had such a good time, and <sighs> where do I begin with that? I, I like, like <sighs> yeah, where do I even begin? It with was it? fantastic. It started with the rain. Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. the rain was coming down that night. It was letting loose on this city. Yes, um, but it was like. It was a lot of rain, but it was like light rain. It wasn't like heavy, oppressive mm. drops. It was like it was like little tiny drops. So it wasn't like you <sighs> were soaked, right? Yeah, you I was. Head was yes, soaked. but You're it wasn't like way. oppressive. It was yeah. a nice rain. <laughs> no, I agree. It was. It was kind it was of a, a nice very rain. nice rain. Anyway, standing in line, um, going into DSO, just we were all excited. It was just a. I don't know. It was a good night. We get through security, go upstairs go to our old little cute spot in the corner. (laughs) And before we head upstairs, we meet Jason, who, don't you remember Jason? Mm -mm. We danced with them all night. With the glasses, and I he. I thought his name was John. Oh, John. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I don't remember Jason. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew it was a J. Sorry, John. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I was no. like, I I got that feeling of when you get embarrassed, like your ears kind of get hot. Like I was Rock on the somebody. spot because I know this is being recorded, and I'm like. We danced with them all night, and she's talking about one person as a them, and and I'm like, I have no idea who I danced with now. I'm trying to remember around me that night. We danced with a lot of people. Yeah. Anyway, can, please continue. Um. And anyway, so we're there dancing, and it just started getting really good. It was yeah. Well, a couple songs in, they yeah. go into El Paso. Oh, and that was really a sweet, sad, cute, exciting moment, yeah. all in wrapped into one. And while we were in that, I realized that Dad had been um, gone for forty days. Yeah, he had been forty days and forty nights in the desert. Yeah, he was back. Pop showed back up in the form of El Paso at DSO. Yeah, and I was having some weird electrical things <laughs> going on during the week with my phone. And I remember Ping after uh, dad passed. She was like, you know, they can't like talk to you, but they can communicate through electricity. So 
pay attention if your phone or like any electronics start to mess up because it could be communication. And when she went home from the hospital, she had the garage act up on her. Mm -hmm. And she just, I just thought that thought, you know, Mm -hmm. and it was just cool because like, We were there and I was, we were like dancing together and it was just super sweet and special moment. Dark Star Orchestra is always a good date night. Yeah, it was like very healing, you know, in a lot of ways. And I got a really serious download that night that I wasn't going to share on the air because. But now you are. But now I am. (laughs) Let's hear it. And this is a great episode to be talking about downloads. I know, but. I decided to cut back one day and invest in my business. And I started that next month. Right on. And I feel really fucking good about it. And it, I know it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal. And in an effort to like save my, my hands, which is what I really need. And to, I don't know, like I just felt like, this was the next thing for me and DSO with all their, their tunes that that night ending with wild thing. Like (laughs) it was, that's another, like it was like such an affirmation. It was like, get, you need to be like that uh, of yourself. And I just kept hearing that message in different forms all night. I read it. I listened to podcasts and it just was like sprinkled throughout the day in different ways. And, once I, in a while, you can get shown the light yeah. in the strangest of places if you look at it right. You and your <laughs> dumb little <laughs> it's true, song though. quotes. No, but, but that's from the night, actually. You're, yeah. No, you're true. You're true. It's cheesy and true. That wasn't my quote. That's a yeah. one of those another one of those moments during the show. It yeah. was like, oh shit. Okay. And then I thought about Robert Hunter a lot too that night. I just thought about what um, Big Steve said, like about his lyrics uh, about his lyrics and there was just so many things going through me and i felt very liberated that night too i felt like a lot of baggage had been dropped off and left there that's weird that you said that i was thinking during the show about like how everybody loves jerry so much right and me too and people talk about hunter and, and, um, you know, they, he's venerated in the Grateful Dead community. But if you think about it, the thing that, that people love, or at least with me, the thing that like really got me before the music got me was the lyrics. The lyrics are what pulled me in. The music is what kept me. And those are Hunter's words. He was translating this experience that everybody was having into poetry that was like multi-layered and timeless so that you could be having that experience 50 years later hear that same poetry and know that he's talking about that same experience that you're having right now and it seems like to me hunter's name should be talked about just as much or more than Garcia or Weir or no, Eaton. It's weird. He's, Usually he's, writers aren't. Right? Writers. That's the thing. How it, yeah. <laughs> With movies. And it's very, and song, and it's weird for me to get a specific message that it was like, you need to read Hunter's writings. Like that, I I don't. I would pay attention to that. Yeah, I don't come out of um, every show with a specific thing, but this show I felt very specific and I'd done a reading before I left. We left earlier in the day. What kind of reading? Um, just like the little Oracle reading, you got me a new deck for oh, yeah. Christmas. The Hermetic Tarot? No, not that one. Oh. Um, I forgot the name of it. The sacred Sacred. S- anyway, a tarot anyway, reading. Yeah. And it said, get ready to step into your new limelight. You may need to do lose things in order to gain the new, uh, it was just about elevation. Wow. And like stripping down the excess so that you can grow, um, like, you know, like pruning. It's always awesome. Trimming the fat. When we get all get to go somewhere as the four, like as the four of us. Yeah. And that felt so Mm -hmm. good. Ryder. One of my favorite things was listen to have Ryder back because Ryder has been missed a couple of the shows 
since last year and having all four of us like his schedule just happened to work out perfectly yeah and <clears throat> it wasn't sold out and we got him a ticket we just went as this no simple road family and it felt really good to dance with the guys we had our own cute little platform <laughs> and we did have a little stage yeah it was just so a night of comfort and yeah. release it was cool to hang out with john too man it was funny when he walked up he was like hey aaron and i was like Hey, because he looked familiar, but I wasn't sure where Sorry, I knew him from. And <laughs> no, I, he knows this. And no, and I'm I, saying about myself. I was like, <laughs> where do we, where do we know you from? He's like, dude, I danced with you in Eugene at I think it was either J Rad or String Cheese, one of the two, J Rad. And he's like, I met you in 2018 and at Autzen. And I was like, okay, I don't remember that. He's like, you want me to prove it? <laughs> and bust out his phone and he's got a picture on his phone like he took a selfie of himself and i'm dancing in the background of the selfie like where's waldo and i was like holy shit and, th and then it all like kind of all the dots connected i was like oh yeah i remember you and he's fucking cool man what a cool kid yep. and and just a genuine heart like he was like I want to start going to more different jam band shows, man. I, I've only done like dead and company and Dave Matthews band. And he's like, I want to go see Umphreys McGee. And, and we were talking about how like the grateful dead thing has blown up into this wider community of music. And this whole thing has grown out of it. Yeah. And it's, I it's have noticed pretty that. amazing. It is amazing. What about you, Apple? What? How was your week? <coughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, uh huh? Is this thing on? Yeah, oh. it's on. It was so well. It's a great week. It it's hard to think even of the week, but other than the cul like the culmination of that of it was like looking forward to going to Dark Star and Ryder getting to go. And now this is two weeks in a row for us. This is yeah. like the beginning, mm -hmm. the beginning of the summer. concert season. It's nice to have two weeks in a row, but now it'll be nice to have a little lull and then on into Umphreys and Pigeons and everything. Goose so and yeah, Andy Frasco. Great week. <clears throat> it, it went fast. It really did. It was, it was a good fast week. And yeah. then Friday night was just amazing to go like that, starting getting a little drenched in the rain, almost to the point of like, holy shit. And then you get baptism. in and yeah, shake it off and... And Dark Star is just always special for us as a family. We've gone every yeah. year since we got up here, and they just bring the best out of a crowd. I love yeah. them. The crowd, be, the crowd, the crowd is so them. into everybody. It's like it like just singing the lyrics at the top of their lungs. It was so that little place is just packed, and everybody's singing. It was so funny to me. Like trucking is the song that always comes up in my mind when I think of when I didn't know the dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody knows that's what trucking. most yeah pe people are even if they don't they're like I don't know the Grateful Dead. And you go trucking. I got my chips and they're like oh, <laughs> oh or oh, Touch yeah. of Gray. Touch of Gray is another one. Yeah, and it, so when you see trucking live, you one would think that it would be trite or like it's not. No, it's it's so it's so fun. It's so awesome. And it was a cool that. show because what it was the nineteen seventy seven Paramount Theater yeah. show that they recreated. Thanks for saying for that. I knew it started with a P, and I was like, Oops. Paramount. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was Palladium. But when the, but then they, they threw Johnny that. Be Good and oh they my went god, wild that was thing fun, wild thing. The what? trucking, everybody just completely lost their shit, man. Everybody was just jamming, dancing, and I I was like kind of laughing to myself during it because I'm dancing my ass off too, but I'm like, how funny is it? that this is the song that gets everybody <laughs> grooving <laughs> like <laughs> like because it's such the <laughs> passe you would think mm -hmm. song like well and the way they play it too i mean they play it with like 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 just a notch below j -Rat. i mean it's up tempo oh, and yeah, it's in yeah. your face it's rocking yeah those those bass notes at the at the break yeah yeah it, it's hitting it's hitting. If you yes, haven't seen was... Dark Star, you need to, whoever you are, if I'm talking to you, if they come to your town, go. It's yeah. worth it. Totally worth what it. What a great night. <laughs> yeah. Ryder? Ryder, how about you? Um, My week was cool. I've been talking about going back to school, and I just so happened to get like a like last minute random like uh, training, two week training thing assigned to me at work which is why I got to go to the show and it was uh it's a kind of cool little dip into being in a classroom setting again for the first time like we're doing actual like 
stuff. Learning stuff. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Know, all the, <laughs> he doesn't want to get into yeah, it. Yeah. No, all the, the training from my work before was very like simple. Like you plug this device in and it turns on and you press this button and now it works. And now it's like, <laughs> all right, learn binary. So it's, That's it's cool, been man. really cool. Yeah. And right. the show was amazing. Okay, I was <laughs> he's like, oh, well, the week I mean, was really guys, good. I did not enjoy the show. You, you guys got though. everything. Oh. Covered, we covered the whole show. It was. But did you get any specific downloads or any kind of? Um, I mean, I did. Okay, I guess we'll do this now. Um, I'm not into Grateful Dead, guys. It was just <laughs> we know that. Okay, it was just very apparent this time. I was. All excited and it was fun to dance and I love hanging out with you guys, yeah. but I just didn't. It doesn't do it for me, guys. Doesn't flip <laughs> it doesn't the do it for you me. You can tell. Yeah, you're not like. Yeah, it doesn't. It, yeah, and that was most of the night for me. It was like this fighting is cool. with it. Yeah, like this. I did, it was a conscious effort to have a good time. Yeah, you're allowed. Yeah, it I know. It, it just sucks because like. Because you live it's with the, deadheads? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the thing here. I know. And it kind of sucks. Imagine how Simon feels. I know. Like, I want <laughs> to enjoy it. I really do. I just, it doesn't. Well, when we went to me. Skull and Roses, you had fun. Yeah, but I was also in the beach for half the trip. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, whatever, man. You're yeah. allowed. I know. You in trouble. It just. <laughs> that's it. Get out. I know. Well, <laughs> let us all release you from the feeling bad part about it yeah. because well, I I am in the same. I have fun wherever I go, but yeah, do I choose to be at certain places over others? Hell yeah, yeah, I totally do. It just and I, I well, get that's that. what you did, you'd enjoy like Umphreys and stuff, or you got to come see. Well, other that's why ones. he'd that's enjoy sing, String Dead. Summit. That's why I think well, you would enjoy that specifically. Yeah, it's not. Thing. It's not Grateful Guys, Dead. You keep saying that. I'm not a huge jam band fan. Like we yeah. keep going like you would like this and then I go and, and it's you're the like, same. Okay, like it's yeah, I like it more than like You had fun at fish. You got yes, your mind. I, had, at I fish. had very much fun at fish, but I've had fun at every single uh that you musically had fun at fish. You came back saying that you musically had fun at fish. I liked one song. That okay. was, and then we and that's well that's <laughs> when I that's it what doesn't I matter. No, He's uh, that's just what I'm it saying. Down. Like that's what I do. Like I go and I hold on to a thing to kind of relate to this whole thing we're doing. And then I keep doing that. That makes sense. You're yeah. allowed. Yeah. Totally. That's a good one. That's really good. I'm just glad you're along. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. No matter what, it was good to have you around. I, it's and always I, good to and have I you around. And I love going. I just... The music. You'd not. rather be at a 21 yeah. Pilots concert. I'd rather be at a metal show or... Uh, pop punk show or something like right. that no that's why you're how old are you 25 there it is <laughs> well no that's why he's writer yeah yeah it's that's say, what yeah, makes him writer that. i that's, feel the same way too there's 50 year olds that have the yeah, same feeling. i mm-hmm. always have fun no matter what but sometimes i'm just like it's 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 cool it's cool. i think everybody feels like that occasionally no we well, and a lot of times shows so like this morning I was just looking fucking me and Ryder really want to go see Tool but Ugh. they mm. sold out immediately and now all the t- ch- cheapest tickets I could find for like I mean I don't care whether it's bucks. nosebleed or not but $180 yeah. that's not including the fees not no. doing it, up to like a thousand dollars it's a, it's a thing cow. it's a thing now people buy up all the it's, tickets it's, and it's resell them for fucked up. astronomical Dang. yeah it's a it's a problem and it doesn't just affect tool. It affects all. Oh lot. no, it's yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. it, it's the the more popular popular the music, the more. Do you, you know, remember when you used to have to stand up. in line? Yes, you have to go to Thomas and Mac and wait in oh, line camp out and mm-hmm. camp out in and order to fun. get like Guns and Roses tickets or yeah. whatever. Well, yeah, the Seems line. Like cool it was a party. To meet people. It, it was, was so it was a party. Yeah. You camp out. I, everybody was partying. In I line. sit outside the Aladdin for Guns and Roses tickets or um, not Guns and Roses, Stone Temple Pilots tickets. I did it for ACDC tickets. Yeah, like that's, yeah, that's just so what cool. you did. Yeah. That, that was talk to people on the line. Yeah, it did. It, the were... scene was there in the line. <laughs> yeah. and you did it, it for was... movies too. The only time I ever bought tickets that wasn't online was I would have to call the place, like call the box office and buy them over the phone. Yeah, I've never had to wait in line for tickets. That's what it was called, the place. Yeah, people were yeah, in called the place. place. People <laughs> were <laughs> impatient in lines the back then. Yeah, everybody. You just waited your turn. It, it was a different culture 
than we live in now. It wasn't as hurried. Yeah, it wasn't like, definitely do a slower lines pe- anymore, yeah. man. I don't want to stand on. So yeah, everybody wants immediate. Yeah, yeah. The uh, or in the day of immediate up. satisfaction. We, right now, we are the what is it? Um, fuck. I don't know. Babe. Instant gratification the generation. World. Yeah, oh. that too. That wasn't instant. <laughs> <laughs> that was not. That was a synapse burnout that just happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyhow, no man. What other? What kind of things that happened to you during that night? I don't know. I well, just I told you. Well, I told like you at the very, I, was, I told you at the very beginning of this what I got the the whole thing about the digital campfire, and um, my was dad, it anything personal? Yeah, my dad just knowing that he was there was that's that's what I was going to back. I say that that's one thing I got. It, it always comes down to family. Just it like closer bonding. Mm-hmm. By the end of it, the rejuvenation, like lighting, especially after the winter, like relighting the flame kind of getting things going yeah. again for the season. And then with that, with the El Paso, when that came on, Aaron's dad was like there with, the, he was standing there with us. And it just was really, really healing and nice. And I could hear him singing it as a, like he used to sing it to me in the car <laughs> while we were driving. We'd be driving from Vegas to California when I was a kid and he would sing it all the time. It used to annoy the shit out of me when I was little. <laughs> enough, enough with the El Paso dad. And yeah, I could hear him singing it and I heard it in a completely different way that night. It was, it was all about him going to the next level and it was rad. It was super cool. And, uh, I appreciate dark star for busting that out for me. When I was at work during the day, that day before the show, I just put a little thought out into the universe. I was like, I would really, really appreciate a show with an El Paso in it. And boom. then boom, got it. Boom. Like stoked. They delivered it very well. Yep. Too. <laughs> but I, we got a lot coming, man. And I'm glad that that fire is relit. We got um, pigeons playing ping pong and goose in two weeks. And then Andy Frasco in the UN with Umphreys. The week after that, Andy's got new music out. The Higgs are coming up with Aqueous. Um, then we go to Skull and Roses, and it's going to be uh, a really, really amazing summer. And for all of you that are new to listening to No Simple Road, welcome to the family, you guys. This is kind of our thing. We we do a recap every week of our life and where we're at, what we're doing, and then we give you a little interview. So. We're glad that you're all here with us. Mel's drying her tears for Grandpa over there. But we're glad that you're gathered around the digital campfire with us and hanging out. It's really cool to be out here talking to you guys and knowing that you're out there listening and feeling the love and the vibes that we're giving to you. And we appreciate all you guys out there. So, yeah. Keeps us strong. Yes, it does. What is a city without its music? The legacy of the New York Philharmonic is incredible. Nearly two centuries of history. That's a lot of music and a lot of stories. I was sitting on stage for the very first time thinking, I can't quite believe this is happening. Join me, Jamie Bernstein, as we explore the history of the New York Philharmonic. It's the NY Phil story made in New York, a podcast about a city, its people, and their orchestra. Listen wherever you get podcasts. So I guess I'll do the business? Well, yeah. If you're a new listener, there is a way you can further help us yes. and support us. Yeah, it's important, man. It just so happens that the world that we live in has this thing in it, and it's called money. It is neither good nor bad. It is it's just changing. a tool. Mm-hmm. And it's we an need exchange of energy. Yeah, we need your assistance in that department. And the way that you do that is you go to patreon.com forward slash no simple road and you sign up for a cute dollar or two or five or 50 or 10 or 100. Twelve dollars and 38 cents. If you know a really rich no. friend who's just trying to get rid of a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I mean, you can show them the website. Any, any amount. Yeah, that works. And we have a new $1 patron. What? We do? We do. Yay. What? Peyton K. Peyton K. Peyton K. Peyton K. Your name. Peyton K. Peyton K. Peyton K. K. An angel will be coming your way tonight, Peyton K. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we haven't talked about that in a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you explain any, it, Any, uh, yeah. any... For the 20-20. Yeah, for, all <laughs> for the 20 20 crowd. Any person that donates uh, gets sent a... An angel. How do you do that? How do you do that? You 
How do you send angels? Do you angels? let it out of a cage? <laughs> do you ring a bell? Are they held captive I, by I, you? And I you do you <laughs> masturbate on a sigil? What hey, do you do? On. I keep that. I don't masturbate on it. I do. <laughs> send yeah. me an I, uh, angel. I make a little, um, uh, I, yeah, I guess it would be a sigil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I burn it. But it's it's specific for So you make every the person. person some energy, then you release it with fire into the universe mm-hmm. to go to them and, and do I its ask, deed. I ask a... Uh, uh, Whatever. A force to watch over you. That's what I do. Okay. So Peyton right. Kay, be Yours on the lookout for, a, for a, an a angel. Force. <laughs> a force. A force. It, it'll be nice. We with. promise. Yes. It's always nice. But yeah, that's patreon.com forward slash no simple road. We know we just said a lot. That's how you take care of the family here, you guys. If you listen every week and you get something from the show or you're new and you're like, hey, these guys are dope as fuck. I'm going to give them a buck a month. Patreon. That's the way you do it. And that's how we pay the bills. Follow us on all the social media Ooh, platforms. I just, I just realized. At No uh, Simple Road. Real quick. What? Peyton's Angel's the first one that I get to make with my cool new uh, quill quill pen. Yeah. Ooh. Feather quill pen. All right. Special Angel. Yeah, Special Fancy. Angel. Quill Angel. So all the social media platforms at No Simple Road. Uh, Instagram, follow us. Subscribe. Do all the things. YouTube. Uh, Reddit. R forward slash No Simple Road. Um, what reviews, else? likes, follows, oh, yes. okay. mash it. Listen, everybody out there that hears my voice right now, do yes. me a favor. Could you all do me a solid? Yeah, what? Aaron? Leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and just type a few words in there. Hey, these guys are great. I love this podcast. Or this is my favorite, or whatever you want to write. You, or even if you don't feel like that, just give us the five stars, guys. It helps the algorithms. Yeah. We need to we need to play to the, the algorithms, and we want more people to find out about the show so yeah. that they more can feel that like it. Blah yeah. blah blah. You know how it works. It's called spreading the mycelial network of no no simple rogue family. That's how you do it by hitting like right now. Do it five like. stars. Oh, you can do it while Bye. you're listening. Go do it five stars right now. Right now, the did app, you, did whatever you do app you're doing, it. you did it. Thanks, you guys. Hey, we you. That. Thank you. Hey. Aw, you're so sweet. Yeah, you. Anyhow, everybody, we love you, and we have something really special for you right now. Yes, we do. We do. Get ready. Yeah. This one is super, get super chill, relax, kick back. If you're able, go smoke a bowl. I felt like we were all in the room together. Yep. You could feel Chris's vibe here in the house. It was super cool. We're going to let you guys feel that vibe now, too. So get ready. Here we go. Without further ado, the No Simple Road Crew gives you Chris Chris Dyer. Nobody asked you, Darwin. Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hello? Chris? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. So? I'm good, yeah. man. This is Aaron. Hey, Aaron. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. There's two other people here with me. I'm going to let go have them introduce themselves. Hi. Welcome, Chris. This is Mel. Welcome to our show on the porch. Hey, what's up, Mel? You're in a porch? Well, we, sort of. we usually we are. We usually are on our porch. Actually, today we're in our dining room. <laughs> it's a little cold out in Portland. Oh, cool. I, I, I'm in a porch right now. Oh, oh right perfect. <laughs> and then we got... And then I'm yeah. the, the third one here. I'm. This is Apple. And thank you for taking time to join us today, Chris. We got... I- it's a. It, there's like apple, a, like the fruit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, it's my last name, so that's what everybody calls me. Okay. Cool. Apple <laughs> nail Aaron. Yeah, man. All Nailed right. It. Well is done. Is my connection uh, super super good or you sound kind of shitty? No, you sound great, man. Can you can hear us? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, there might be a, a little bit of a delay. You know, I am in a very uh, rural town of. Peru. So, so the internet and stuff is not like super amazing, but it's great cool. that we got technology to talk in this way. Right? I know. Totally cool, man. And where are you in, in Peru? Uh, it's a little town called Kilmana. It's like two hours south of Lima, it's close to the coast, but it's behind the mountains. It's a valley. 
uh, my parents bought an acre of land uh, eight years ago, and they've been building their home. Oh, shit. And finally, it being, they moved in this year, and so I'm coming to visit them. I'm staying here for, like, three months, and, yeah, it's just kind of like, it's, wow. a, it's a, like a acre orchard with, like, 300 avocado trees, and, uh, you know, since I'm an artist, as you know, I'm kind of want to turn it into an art wonderland kind of like a mini cosm kind of situation down wow. the line oh, so right now i'm looking at my girlfriend i'm looking at my girlfriend ariani uh finish up for the day she's painting a spray painting a mural on one of the walls here in the back <laughs> uh area so you might hear some rattle cans that's cool and uh yeah so i'm on the back, back porch drinking a beer with dogs running around me looking at my backyard and my girlfriend painting sounds, <laughs> sounds like heaven yeah. dude. I, and wow. just just That's be ready because the three of us just packed while you were talking and we're on our way <laughs> <laughs> we're coming we're yeah. coming for you <laughs> yeah no problem like I, I, if eventually i would like to open up this place a little bit for uh you know nice people to visit uh, right now, we just finished the main house where my parents will live, but then we're about to finish my own last you know, group of those were, uh, finish. it's a slow progress now, it's like, you know, it's basically my dad and one dude building it all by themselves, wow. it's not like a bunch of workers, it's, just, yeah. it's low budget. But uh, eventually, we'll have a bunch of places for people to stay. So, yeah, if you guys would want to come and spend some <laughs> wow. time, that's a feasible opportunity. And, you know, I would, you know, like right now, it's like my parents' home and it's like oh, super know, chill. I'm, I'm, but eventually. Yeah, man, that's, that's amazing that if, you have that. Eventually, I want to like make this place into a place for like, you know, art workshops and medicine retreats and just kind of like another hub of positivity on planet earth to uh yeah people and uh keep on spreading positivity wow chris mm. I, first off before like before we have i ever hit you up or anything i have been following you on instagram for a while and the first thing that really stood out to me was uh, obviously the visionary aspect of your art and the the thing that really got me was that you were doing these big murals that were so intricate and intense and just beautiful man mm -hmm. and and it it i felt it thank you so much I, yeah i felt it like art doesn't always do that with me like a few artists yeah and you were one of them like i can feel that the vibration of it come through it to me and what what I originally cool. thought when Thank I you. when I wanted to reach out to you was like we've all here at the table that are talking to you had deep and intense psychedelic experiences and seen and felt and had things happen. But for me to be able to bring that stuff back is very difficult visually. Um, I draw mm -hmm. a little bit, too. But for you, it seems like a natural thing. Was it a progression for you to be able to bring that 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 vision back from the other realm like that? Um, well, it's not fully my intention to do that. Um, I would consider myself something that I've realized. The more I do psychedelics, the more I realize that I'm naturally a psychedelic kind of person. Like psychedelic is not the drug or the, right. the thing that makes you be something different than yourself. I think psychedelia is accessing your higher godly self that you, some people are just that way. And then some people do psychedelics and they, they can see it and then they come back and they want more of it or etc. So I feel I always kind of was psychedelic even before I took psychedelic. And then as I took it, I'm like, wow, this is really uh, showing me more of an aspect of myself. But, uh, you know, I've done psychedelics in different kinds of intentions in my life. At points, I did it more for the fun of it and, mm -hmm. you know, do mushrooms and run around with my friends. Uh, and then I would do it more for like self-exploration, self-realizations, growing, learning, becoming a better person. Uh, now the psychedelic that I use is more ayahuasca, which I do in ceremony around six times a year in batches of three. So two times a year I go to the jungle or get together with my shaman and I 
you know, go down there to do some work. And when I get into that zone, which keeps on getting deeper and deeper each time, I don't go there being thinking like, oh, I got to check out this place and try to remember it so then I can come back home and do a painting. Mm. Uh, once I get there, I'm like so floored and plastered and stomped by the experience that I, last thing I want to do is be like, oh, I got to remember this thing for a painting. It's almost like <laughs> that experience kind of yeah. experience kind of like laughs at me being like, let it go, man. You got to let everything go. Fuck that shit, you know? like. Right fuck your art career, fuck that you're painting, be this thing that I'm trying to show you that you are. And then you will integrate the experience and become that thing. And then whatever you paint, may it be a super trippy, psychedelic, uh, visionary painting or a Bob Ross landscape that is the spirit of God and the universe and consciousness working through the medicine, working through you, working through everything you do. Um, that wow. said, because I get into all these uh, very uh, trippy zones, stuff sticks into my brain and uh, language of that dimension comes through me to express myself, you know, like uh, right. may I want to remember it or not, so, uh, you know, subconsciously things come out and then I, I learn this language and then I use it in my paintings. And, uh, yeah, it's been something I've been doing for a minute. And uh, I, I would say that my painting is 0. 0.00001 of what I experience inside of the infinitude of the universe. <laughs> it's almost like an insult right. to that space. It, it's so... But it, uh, I'm, it's all I got. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> man, I get it. I, I think right. I, if I'm understanding what you're saying, if I'm hearing you right, like, that space, that language is fusing with you. It's revealing itself to you and you and it are becoming kind of the same thing. So in order for you to do your art and do your thing, naturally that thing is expressing itself because that thing is you. Yeah. It's my ultimate self, you know, right. my God self, my higher self, but it's, it's past that. Once you get to that higher, higher God consciousness self, the images stop happening. You dissolve into everythingness and nothingness and there's not even visuals. You just kind of like disappear yet you're everything. So it's just really hard to even bring that experience mm -hmm. down to images. When I'm trying to like be like, oh, how do I paint that? <laughs> I would just leave the canvas empty almost. But even the canvas is, is all, already a lie. So oh, it's really a, a frustrating situation. So I don't even attempt it anymore. I'm just kind of like, in this case, I'm painting a portrait of my shaman. So I was like, I'm going to do a portrait of my shaman, but I'm going to make it like, you know, super trippy and psychedelic and, you know, use all the different uh, words or letters or vocabulary that I've learned in the years of doing paintings in this kind of like super trippy style. Mm -hmm. uh, but once again, you know, a painting is just an image that's still. So it's kind of like a snapshot and I'm trying to just throw a bunch of as much as I can in it so that there's a lot of movement and activity and symbols, but it's still, you know, in one ayahuasca ceremony, I can see so much where I'm just like, fuck, like there's just so much I cannot, you know, and I can't even paint these things and it's moving and it's just kind of like changing and teaching and, you know, uh, it's the, uh, the pika floor, the hummingbird, it keeps on moving. And every, every time you want to catch it, it moves to the next place and it reflects you in a different mirror aspect of yourself. And it's just, it's kind of like laughing at you in a friendly way where it wants <laughs> to heal you. You know, it's, right. it's like a cosmic joke. It's like, you don't know what I am. You know, so I'm always like, what, what, you know, what is I, uh, you know, is it like an alien consciousness that somehow got into a root that's on planet earth? So that we can understand our ultimate self, but it's not even the eye itself. It's trying to opening up a portal into some other dimension or maybe a, a higher aspect of God. Uh, so it's just really, um, it's confusing mm -hmm. and I'm learning every time. And every, uh, sometimes when I go really deep and I'm there and I become it, I understand and I resonate and I know, but then once I go back to the physical uh, reality, I got to kind of like integrate and try to understand what it's all about. Yet the point that the lessons has given me, is about like 
uh, being love. Uh, I am everything else. Everything's one, even though we're divided into, uh, you know, our own fractal realities as bodies and etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, not to take this uh, fractal expression of myself, this body, this race, this name, this life too seriously. Don't take it too seriously. It's just a mask of the infinite behind you, you know, enjoy mm-hmm. it. Have fun, laugh, reality, physical reality in itself is just a bubble of existence in the infinitude of everythingness. Right. Uh, so make the most of it, spread joy, but in the end, nothing really matters. Everything will be sucked back in and we'll all be fine and, and live in bliss. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like try to make the most out of it, you know, like keep on living your life knowing that you are God and you're here to enjoy the physical reality. And if we all live life in that way, knowing that we are God, experiencing physical reality ideally we would all just kind of like share the resources and try to make the most because the physical right. reality has a lot of pleasure and joy and, and family and food and beauty like what, what a beautiful planet we've been given right. let's just yeah. fucking enjoy it yeah. you know like there's so much to be enjoyed and and, and be stoked and, and share and, and, and all, there's so much good. Why can't we just, just do that part of the physical reality? Like, why do we have to, like, you know, get in the traps of the mind and all the negatives and be pulled into ego and separate ourselves and judge others? It, it's part of reality and it's part of the lesson. So right. I accept it and there's a lot to it. But uh, it'd be great to know ourselves in our higher perspective so that we can start acting like the gods that we are and, and enjoy how we could enjoy. So that's the kind of the things that it's kind of teaching me throughout these last six years of uh, ceremonies. That's quite, and, it's uh, quite yeah, the, I don't know. Make life better. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a, you, that's a mouthful. You said quite a bit and that, you know, go ahead, Apple. Oh, well, I was just going to say, hearing you talk, Chris, you, you speak volumes. And that's what one thing I love about your artwork is like I was looking today again, like through a, a lot of your, like trying to f- pick a favorite. I can't pick a favorite of yours. Every single one of your pieces of artwork speaks it's loudly, singular. it yeah. says something. It, it's, Thank I can't, you. I'm so happy I, yeah. to feel it. Well, you know, you want to do that. Like, like, like I'm going to pick my favorite or my favorite song or this or that. Your, yours are all, they're just all amazing. E- each and every one of them is amazing and it speaks volumes. And, and I, you know, you. hearing you talk, it, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. And it, there's something that I want to go back to that you said, though, man. You're talking about Aya mm-hmm. and you're like, you know, is it this alien consciousness that seeded itself into this this root, into this vine? Is it, you know, the mind of God expressing itself through human consciousness? Is it this? And I, I too, have had those questions. And mm-hmm. I wonder, in, in myself, I've asked myself this question. I can't answer it, so I'm asking you. Maybe you'll have something to say. What is it mm-hmm. in us that tries to qualify it and make it something when it, when we can just let it be whatever it is and go with the experience as human beings, we have this thing where we're like, I have to know what the base of this thing is. I need to know where it came from. You know what I mean? What well, is that's, that? that? That's the mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mind, it's almost like our uh, hard drive that helps us operate in this world. I love my mind. My mind right. helps me take my steps and walk and go to the fridge and grab what I need to drink. Uh, where I start looking at how I appreciate my mind is after an Aya ceremony where I'm still super interdimensional. And if it's a daytime ceremony, my shaman will be like, okay, let's all go to the river. I'm like, whoa, dude, I got to fucking stand up now and put up my bathing suit and walk to the river and not trip in the rocks. And he's like, yeah, man, you got to learn how to, be functional in both dimensions, both the spiritual dimension where you realize mm-hmm. your absolute God, uh, right. God self, but also you got this mind that helps you tell your body how to take those steps and put on your bathing suit and not trip on the rock. You can do it. You just got to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been I'm doing that a little bit. So that, that same mind is the one that's trying to like catch the butterfly, catch the, the pika floor, the, uh, the hummingbird is like, what is this thing? I need to understand. Mm. But then the eye, I just keeps on driving you deeper and deeper to a point of discomfort where you're almost like the body's like, holy shit. Like, I don't know what's going on right now, but I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And that's the point of surrender. That's, that's where they tell you like, dude, you can't fight 
I, uh, you can't be like, okay, no more. This is not getting comfortable for like, I, I'll be like, well, fuck you. I'm taking you where I got to take you. And that's where you're always told before a ceremony, you just got to let go and surrender and let her do what the fuck she wants to do with you. But know that you're safe. You know, she's not going to kill you. It might seem like she's going to, I've had ceremonies where I thought I was going to get a heart attack. I've had ceremonies where she electrocuted me where I'm like shaking and I'm like, Oh, oh shit, too much energy going through my body. This last uh, retreat, she took me so deep that I really had to ground in my body and remember to breathe and not to, you know, remember that I'm still in a physical vessel and that there's parameters and that my body needs oxygen and that I need to keep it going or I'm just going to fucking drop dead there because you're so detached from reality right. or shit my pants. For example, that's another one where I'm, <laughs> there's a lot of ceremonies where I'm so floored. I feel like I'm about to shit my pants and I got to remember my physical self. It's like, okay, Chris, yes, you could let go to the point of shit in your pants, but then you got to sit in your shit and it's stinky <laughs> and it's dark and try your best to still uh, hold it in. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, cool. okay, Thank cool. You, Thank you, mind. Moving yeah. on. Yeah. Thank so, you. So that's, that's where the mind, I appreciate the mind, but where the mind's a bitch is everywhere else in our life. It's always kind of like, oh, what is this? Who is that person? Uh, do I like him? Do I not? Uh, he looks like this or he speaks this way. So how do I judge this? And blah, blah, blah. Like we've been trained our life to do that yeah. by our, everybody, our parents, religion, society, TV. Like it's not our fault. Uh, we've been conditioned to be a certain way. And I feel what I'm missing, like I uh, and others like that are doing. They're breaking those chains. They're like, fuck Ooh. all these beliefs and boxes we've been put into. Let's put the mind to itself and start uh, observing life and yourself and everything from outside of that these boxes. So, and that's when you're throwing up. It's almost like you're throwing up your chain. Yes. You're throwing up your all, all your like your entities, your viruses. If you put it back to the analogy of a computer, it's like all these uh, restrictions that we put on ourselves. All these viruses that got injected into us through our childhood and the rest of our life. So I is like one by one going in there searching, finding a virus in your mind or in your body. It's like, okay, I'm going to remove this. That's why I feel like I always got to go back to the jungle to do more ceremonies. It's not that I'm addicted to it. It's just that I, there's a lot of work to do in me. And I imagine in every person, because I'm not even that bad of a person, but <laughs> there's a lot of work to, I, I talk to some people it's like, oh, I don't need to do anything. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm fantastic. I got nothing to heal. And I'm like, that's how I felt before I started this journey. And once I started the journey, I realized how oh, shit. there was a lot of shit broken in me. And the more I fix myself, the more I see I need to fix myself. Because sometimes it's like this childhood trauma, this child, there's even past life stuff that has nothing to do with us, but it's some kind of situation that just kind of stuck in our vibration that you're like, why am I this way? Like, why right, I have to right. be this way? I don't want to be this way. And, I understand it and I can observe it, but still I act in certain patterns. How can I break it? And I uh, patiently each time is like, okay, let go. Don't think this way. Let's just kind of like accept that you're fucking amazing and beautiful and God, and there's nothing to fear. And can you accept this even for one, you know, a couple hours? And finally I give up and it's like, okay, I accept it. I'm amazing. I'm love. I love myself. Okay, yeah, I give up. Whatever you want. And I can be that way for a day. And the next day, my mind comes back and it's like, hey, hey, let's see how I can trick you back into thinking the way I've been making you think all yeah, your life. Yeah. And, and, and that's why integration is important. You got to observe the mind and be like, oh, I see you and I can see you how you want me to think like you've made me think all my life. Mm. But I want to start thinking the way I am trying to teach me to just love myself no matter what, no matter what the judgment I give upon myself. I'm going to drop those judgments. I'm beautiful. I'm great. And if I can go out there in the world and be proud and empowered and happy, and I can spread that joy into other uh, brothers and sisters, and we can all just be happy about who we are no matter what, I think that'd be a happier humanity. Oh, I gosh, think that yeah. would just be the heaven we're all looking for, you know? Heck yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, man. And, and that thing that you're talking about, too, is it, it, it's giving you, it's shining a light on those things that are hiding in the shadows so that when they pop mm -hmm. up, they're familiar instead of unknown. 
so that you can call it out. Hey, I remember you. You're not supposed to be mm-hmm. here. You need to go. And that, right. Yeah. Or love it. You know, like and one of my last uh, journeys, oh, wow. it showed me my fear, my insecurity as this bug. And it was kind of ugly, but kind of cute, too. It was all <laughs> hiding. It was hiding, and it came out all kind of shy. Aww. And I, and, and I was like, oh, there you are. Aww. And, yeah, you're nested in me and my body because of a lifetime of thought patterns and uh, traumas and way people treated me. I can't kill you. I don't think I could ever forget those things that actually happened to me that made me have you in my body. But I can accept you. I can love you. I can forgive you. And when you show mm. up and you want to trick me your way, I can be like, hey, buddy, I, I don't hate you. <laughs> but please don't <laughs> convince me to think the way you want me to yeah. be. Because yeah. I just want to be a liberated human being that has no fucking issues or, or negativity. I want to be good. Yeah. It's really hard, man. Like, it's, it's hard because every single day there's a million things attacking us. And I put myself in situations that are really chill. I'm in nature. I'm in family. I got food. I make art. My life's generally chill. And still the energies hit you left and right. And sometimes you're just a grumpy little bitch. And, yeah. You know? And that's when you got to cut, cut at yourself and be like, oh, Chris, why are you being this way? You know, that's not your higher self. So... Try your best to just uh, ask for forgiveness to that person you just hurt and try again, you know? You always got to keep on forgiving yourself over and over again because we're human. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's and that's There's no limit. He's like, I didn't say sorry for one time and that's it. Never going to hurt your feelings again or step on your foot by accident or, you know, be late. Like, no, things happen and you always have to, you're always brand new. I Like, always forgiving yourself, always loving yourself. Always giving yourself a you gotta, pat on the back. Right. Try your best, at least. And, yes. uh, and it goes back to just being present and observing yourself, your thought patterns. Because you could be the bitch and then continue being the bitch and not catch yourself. I mean, like, oh, shit, I'm being a bitch. I don't mm-hmm. want to be this way. Let's try to step it back a little bit and uh, ask for apologies or at least just shut the fuck up and don't be a bitch. Um, <laughs> That's hard. That's hard sorry. for people, man. That, I mean, I'm it's speaking for sometimes. myself, dude. It, you know, like yeah. that those times come up and I think part of the illusion is, is attached to emotion because emotion drives that bitch inside uh-huh. and it gives it excuses. Yeah. It gives, well, I feel like this. So A, B, C, and D. And mm-hmm. when you're in that cycle, that I think that's the beauty of the psychedelic is that it completely ex- exposes all of that is a good word, I think. Expose, right. Exposes it. Well, the, the psychedelic uh, is very self-reflective and you got to pay attention to everything because it's amazing. So you're in this meditation and what it kind of is trying to remind you is you should meditate more in your life like your life should be that way where you're always kind of like observing like as if you're on mushrooms all the time like wow look at that flower or wow look at that beautiful person or yes. oh my god I'm, I'm not not being correct right now how could i not be that way because i want to be loved uh say like yesterday i was having a, a, a fight with my girlfriend and I, I hate that you know but sometimes i just say the wrong thing or or i do something and then i do go back in my back uh, uh, yard and kick a soccer ball for like an hour and just kind of like think like, okay, why am I feeling this way? Why am I acting this way? Uh, what's, you know, let's order my thoughts. Let's observe. Let's see why am I being a bitch right now? I don't want to be this way. Uh, let's observe, observe, observe. And then once I order up my thoughts, I could go back in and, and converse it. And she had been doing the same. So then we could both apologize for our own, uh, uh, mistakes we had done in the fight and, and, uh, you know, recognize that we're not perfect and, mm-hmm. and move forward and be like, okay, let's from now on, let's try to move in this direction and it's all good. And then everything was fine. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, but that's like, I, you know, that'd be amazing if say like the world leaders that we give so much power would act in that way where oh they're gosh. like, okay, I'm, I'm acting from ego right now. Uh, I'm making this war or I'm doing this thing because I feel that other president or the whole world that's observing you right now will think that I'm weak 
and I don't want to appear weak. I, I'm this important big person, and I got to do this thing. And it'd be so great instead of be like, oh shit, I'm being a bitch. Maybe I should just kind of like talk it out and and admit mistakes when I make mistakes and see if that other leader can also do the same. And then we can just kind of like shake hands and do whatever is better for our people on the planet. You know, yeah, you, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? Dude, oh my gosh. I, you, I saw the whole thing while you were saying it. And, it's a beautiful thing that I think people such as our, all of us are offering up to the generations um, under us. We, It'd be we, great. Right? Like think about the, what you just said and your artwork, your um, personal choices, um, the people that you meet, they meet you and they, they get that feeling from you. And not only are you planting it and spreading it, but then they become planters and spreaders as well. And so all these totally. younger kids, it's mycelium, yeah, like we're seeing a generation that we're not so proud of right now. And people like, again, we're, we're, we're correcting it where we can, you know, we are yeah. having children and raising them better, or we are being more creative instead of, you know, and more loving, yeah, more loving and things. And maybe not everyone's like that, but that's what we're moving towards. And that's what I, that's what I was going to say. It, I, I started doing psychedelics in like the late eighties. And so I've had 30 plus years of time to see the world through those eyes. And I see mm -hmm. this proliferation with the, um, potential legalization of MDMA and the studies with psilocybin that are going on. The conversation around psychedelics is not in a back room anymore it's, it's out front and with that mm -hmm. is more visionary art more psychedelic music more beautiful poetry more sustainability ecologically friendly things conscious efforts to be better to ourselves and the planet and it's all connected to this thing that you're talking about where you've gone and dissolved into nothing and everything at the same time realize that you're not separate from anything around you and and then you come back and and the illusion kind of comes back i always think about it like my windshield getting dirty over time like if it rains and then i can't quite see out the windshield anymore but this mm -hmm. this thing is spreading itself out into the world in all of these different forms in the form of people in the form of art in the form of poetry in the form of conversations like we're having right now and it's waking up the vibration of life it, it it's a returning is kind of how i see it right totally i i very much agree with that definitely sometimes the world gets to me Sometimes I'm like, wow, there's so many problems in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, are we going to make it? It, it? Some people are saying we're at the brink of destruction. I'm a very positive, optimistic, utopic kind of person, as you can hear from me speaking. Uh, but I myself still sometimes say like, ah, oh, what the fuck? Let's just have some fun before the end of the world and, <laughs> yeah. and whatever. Yeah. But then when I go into the Aya Godhead space, She's like, don't worry about it, man. Like, I'm all powerful. Not Aya, but what Aya access is right. to that God, thing. I imagine, yeah. is that that consciousness. And it's like, don't worry. I'm, like, all powerful. I got this shit. It's all good. <laughs> Just do your best, and it's all good. So, you know, we were talking about generations getting better or, like, you know, uh, politicians or leaders, right. uh, you know, reflecting what we are interested are better for us. So I'm in that space and I'm like, man, like, how can we, you know, politics or how is the world going to be? It's just like, don't even think about it right now. It's something you won't really even understand. And you were saying, uh, you know, psychedelics are getting legalized and stuff. I like to think that in general, things are always getting a little bit better. The generations yeah. get a little bit more healed, hopefully not more traumatized. So it, I'm sure it also happens the other way around, right. but say like, a person who had a bad father didn't like that his father was bad. So he'll do a little bit of an effort to be a better father than his father was. Right. And then that next person is a little bit more healed and they'll do a better job. So I'd like to think that we're getting a little bit wiser and more healed throughout the generation. Right. Same with planet earth. We're realizing like, Oh shit. Like, uh, we're like doing damage to the environment. Let's not do that. So we start recycling. 
and then we start using electrical cars. These are all new things that, you know, when I was in college, I was so cheering for, and it seemed like it was never going to arrive, and now they're, like, totally normal, right. but yeah. we still feel like, oh, like, this is not enough. And, yeah, it's true. It's not enough, but what else is going to come, you know? Like, what else? We, let's, not, let's not throw the towel here. Like, I'm sure more developments will come, more technology will come. And, yes, so they like, are being legalized. What does that mean? It means people's minds are freeing up in general, where, like, if I take the taxi cab and somebody sees I have dreadlocks, they're like, oh, I don't judge you anymore because in my mind you smoke weed and weed mm. is bad. <laughs> but now the government of Canada says that weed's okay, so I don't judge you anymore. I don't even smoke weed. But, you know, that's just the general perception of people and psychedelics like right. and drugs. And as, as that judgment lifts, then we're allowed to explore consciousness more. We're allowed to be more self-reflective. Maybe that leads into more meditation and people wanting to become healed and uh, better people, and uh, in general, less judgmental, you know, realizing that race and culture and religion is not really what it's about, you know, yeah. it's about what's behind all of those masks, and we can't get lost in the mask. Yeah. So, the, the, yeah, I'm very optimistic about the future. I have to be. What the fuck else am I going to do? Well, yeah, I'm going to be all like, yeah. yeah. about it. And just let it be? No, like, I want to, like, do my part and try my best. And if it does go to hell, well, at least I try my best and I can go, I, I can die peacefully and go back to the eternal infinity sun of bliss or whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, you know, there's something that you said, man. You and, win or you win. Yeah, you, we win either way. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, if you can honestly right. say you did your best, that's I mean, that's, that's, all, right. um, that's right. epic. And, and, but the, there's something that you said that, two things. First of all, if you're, you personally, if your consciousness is expanding, if you're having a deeper understanding of yourself, if you're doing better, becoming a better person, and if you are g genuinely part of that infinite mind of God, then consciousness is in fact raising because you are that consciousness that is raising. It's happening. Right. It's not like if it happened, you are it. It's that thing unfolding in you right now. So there's your proof. Right. And then second, totally. we, we were at the gorge last year at a concert and in the middle of the show, have you ever been to a, a, a Grateful Dead concert, Chris? Like the old school Grateful Dead no, or the or, new Or Dead and Company, Dead either or, one. No, well, I did a Dead and Friends at a festival, okay. but I'm sure it's not the same as like a full on craziness okay. uh, so, gorge show. So you know? in, in, the <laughs> middle, in the middle of the show, they do their drums in space. And during drums... I, I got this download of like the earth speaking and saying to me, you think you're worried about the environment and the planet. Don't you think that I have this under control? What I am is mm. so far beyond what you can even comprehend. Mm. You have no right. idea what, what I'm doing. Yeah. And not to yeah. mention, we underestimate her. Yeah. All of these people here, I'm shaking them right now and waking them mm. up. I have a whole army that I'm raising up of people that are waking up to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So quit worrying, mm, relax and let go, man. Have fun. I was like, okay, yeah, don't okay. be like anxiety is good to some degree, but don't live in an anxiety of well, fuck kind of mode. That's mm -hmm. not going to attract a better future. No, <laughs> no. Um, yeah. It, so, but uh, on, on, on that thing, okay, anyways, I don't want to interrupt your thought. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Um, you know, you were having that realization where like the earth is telling you like, we got this. And I think that's an individual, uh, download as you say, or upgrade of consciousness. And I think the way we're going to make the, the, the world a better place is by having the, all these individual personal, uh, upgrades and activations, and then let that spread out instead of always being bummed out that, you know, yes. your neighbor is a jerk or the president's not doing what you think that it should do. That's their own individual human uh, capsule and you got to respect their process and you mm -hmm. fucking pray and bless them for whatever they're into. 
but you got yours, you know, yeah. and we're still blow it, you know, like I know I blow it. So I imagine most people also blow it. So yeah. all we yeah. got is our own homework to be like, okay, <laughs> if I, I want the world to be perfect, I got to try my best to be perfect. And that's hard enough. So I'm going to focus on myself. I'm going to do the best according to the ethics that I'm setting out for myself. And, you know, of course, even though the earth talks to you and talks to me and say like, Hey, I got this shit. That doesn't mean we're going to like stop recycling or no, stop caring. We're still going to do our part, <laughs> but without the anxiety that everybody else wants to throw on us that, you know, it's fucked and, uh, you yeah. know, the chips are being called and the, you, like your efforts are, you know, a lot of people tell like, ah, oh, like, you know, the environment's done, you know, there's no point in you trying to, you know, the overpopulation alone will get us or, or this and that's happening. And it's like, well, you don't know. There's factors. You know, yeah, maybe there'll be shifts. Maybe the, the, the climate will change and we'll have to adapt accordingly. Humanity has adapted throughout the long history. You know, like we've had ice ages. We, we'll work with it in whatever way the planet feels she has to reveal herself. Yeah. We'll work with it and hopefully continue enjoying and, and uh, finding happiness through it. Wow. Um, you know, uh, let it go. You know, not be so attached to this is the only way we will succeed. We don't know. Well, it's, good. it's beautiful. It will be very surprising because, you know, to see how things will continue to reveal itself to us in our own lifetime. But it's already amazing what we've seen. In our, I don't know how old you guys are. I'm, I'm 40. I'm 48. I've seen, Apple's, okay. Apple's 50. I'm 50. I'm 41. And Mel's, Mel's so we're right okay. there. Amazing. Yeah, we're all So you guys are even less young than me. And uh, <laughs> so you've seen... Uh, epic amount of changes in your yes. lifetime yes. Uh, the internet alone yeah and it's having huge. a com- much like an amazing computer in your pocket to do whatever you want is and communicate with everybody and do what we're doing right now that's it's insane yes. super empowering i'm so grateful for this mm-hmm. it, it, so that, empowering, and so. and you hear people I, I at least i do i see a lot of derision around technology and and saying, you know, oh, you know, social media is bad. It's 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 destroying everything. And but, but there's a flip side to that. And as there w- is with everything, we made this connection mm-hmm. through social media. We're having this conversation right now because of Instagram. And it, this wouldn't right. be happening without that. So you and can it, look at it however it's you like want. We, we've talked about that too. It's like we said that it, it, it's it is a tool. It's just like a hammer. You can use a hammer to smack somebody in the head. That's not a good thing. <laughs> or you can use a hammer to build a shelter or something. You know, it's it's a tool. And if you use the right way, it's magnificent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So you know, I think a lot of things in our world is in gray, you know, it's in the middle. And that's the same for psychedelics. Uh, You know, if you use it with intention and in the right amount, it can be amazing medicine. If you overdo it, or if you just want to do it to get into this like ego trip of like, you know, whatever, it could take you in a wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, you know, and it's the same with technology. It's the same, you know, with, social media and a bunch of technologies. Uh, yeah, I think everything's kind of in the middle and it's all about our intention and what we want to do with it that uh, makes it good or bad. So when you when you go and you throw up a mural or you paint the side of a house or you are painting on canvas or whatever, what's, mm-hmm. what is the intention different for each piece? I mean, I guess you're a diff- in a different place in a different headspace no matter what if it, you know depending on where you're at but like are you putting yeah, that no, out there like, to do something well this that's a uh, complicated answer because it changes every time okay, like that's what i thought yeah it depends on the canvas there's not like every single canvas i do is about the same thing there's different things i want to uh talk about through a painting oh, okay uh so there's different topics sometimes uh i want to just let the medium do the talking without me sometimes i set up with a specific non-intention and let like say i got this uh technique where i just do a bunch of spray paint drips and it creates a big mess and then i start drawing and find the shape through it and then i shade it and it ends up being a painting and then i gotta figure out like okay what did my subconscious try to tell me oh shit. And, you know what is this painting about so sometimes i go with an intention and i'm like i want it to go like this other times i go like all right uh 
tell me something and reveal what I need to learn from this. Then when it comes to a mural, uh, many times it's about like where I'm at, uh, both uh, emotionally and physically, like say uh, if the mural is in a, you know, a refugee camp in Palestine, you know, I got to kind of like feel out the place, uh, feel out what both what people would want to see, but also keep it honest to myself and, uh, you know, and that's what I did last summer. I was in oh, wow. Palestine and I had to paint a refugee camp oh, and wow. they gave me a big wall and I had to be like, okay, so I'm definitely not going to paint guns and stuff <laughs> because it's yeah. enough of that. Mm. And I want to go the opposite direction. So uh, what do they like? Oh, they like, uh, animals. Uh, maybe they like horses and camels. So I made a super psychedelic camel where it's basically no, you could even tell it's a camel. And they're all kind of like looking at being like, what the fuck what the that fuck thing? Is this? Yeah. But it's also like playful and happy and colorful. It's just weird, but it's well made at the same time. So they're kind of like confused about what it is, but it kind of like makes them think. It's kind of like removing them from their comfort zone, uh, but not in an aggressive way. It's in a kind of yeah. like a playful way where they got to kind of like think like, okay, what did this guy do? Who is this guy? Why does he look weird? And they just want to put me in their box. It's like, oh, well, you got tattoos. You must be like Israeli or you must be partisan of this enemy or this or the other. And the kids that were very difficult to work with, they kept on trying to steal my cans and they were throwing <laughs> things at me. And I'm, and I'm like, dude, I'm here to serve you. I'm yeah. here to do this for you. But they were being, they were being super bitches because they've been growing in an environment of repression and their uh, families have uh, almost encouraged for them to be wild animals because that's who they have to be in order to fight the repression they've been put under. Uh, they will be the next, uh, you know, uh, rebellion fighters right, right. to replace their dead fathers or imprisoned fathers. It's really crazy, you know, like their the parents or either dead or in prison or mm -hmm. exploded or it's a crazy so world. Yeah. The kids. yeah. So I'm like both intimidated and nervous and trying my best to do something beautiful to them. And they're fucking with me and I'm being affected, but I got to like remain in my uh, position of compassion that they're serving them. But then uh, they keep on fucking with me and I'm crying and I'm just oh. like, no, you're here to serve. You can't fight back. And, so it was a really challenging environment. If anything, it taught me like, oh, maybe you're a little too sensitive for throwing yourself in such a harsh environment. Right. But it was a it was a gift too. It's like, okay, you got to experience the amount of anxiety that they live in every single day, yeah. and this is why you have to work harder for, um, you know, that kind of um, kind of like activist art. You know, I, I wouldn't say my art is activist art, but once in a while, I get invited to to do art for people who are in a position of discomfort and I'm happy to do that art for free as a way to beautify their environment right. and, and, and so on. Or just to say like, you know what? I don't know if this painting will make you happy or improve your environment, but at least says that I give a fuck. Yeah. And that's already more than most people will give you. So the mission so is that's spreading That's all I love. got, once again. Yeah, it's spreading right. love. It's all I got. I'm just an artist. You know, all I got <laughs> is like colors. And this is all I can do, you know, do something mm -hmm. pretty. And some people will be like, what does that do? And other people will be like, hey, that made my day because it's, you know, it, that's beautifying me, my environment. So it's relative to the observer, but I can only do what I can do. Right. And I can only be affected so much and try my best to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, remain in my consciousness that I, you know, I'm love and all that stuff. It, it, it's easier uh, said than done many totally. times, depending on yeah. what environment you place yourself in. Especially when <laughs> you're getting rocks thrown at you. Know, you. But it's a noble cause, and that's so beautiful because it just makes me feel good to get to know you tonight. And, like, I feel your the cuteness coming out, like the <laughs> energy, the care, the trying the thank you so much yeah, yeah. yeah like and I, while i'm honest. scrolling through through your artwork while we're talking to you and then you're 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 narrating you're narrating the it's just when people like yourself are awakened and i'm i just mean like yourself in the sense that like um you decided to take this journey and now you think in a way that you didn't think prior to that and 
or you said you even were kind of like always had it in you, you know, that kind of psychedelia way. But when people are waking up and as they wake up, I should say, it does make the world feel lighter and it makes the world feel brighter. And even though you can see all different kind of realities that you want, um, speaking with you is reminding me of the power of one person shining their light. So I just want cool, to say, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah man, man. It, I'm feeling you, it. You know, I, something came to mind while you were talking and, and it, this may be a weird question, but mm-hmm. it's something that I've had to come to grips with, with, with myself. Are you proud of yourself, Chris? Yeah, of course. Good, I, I love myself, you know, Good. like, but wow. I, I, like when I say that, I hope that people don't take it as in like, Oh, he's so arrogant no, and so no, cocky. No, no. That, 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 that line between like confidence and self love and arrogance and cockiness mm-hmm. is a fine one, especially when you're like quote unquote well known or famous or whatever. So I always got to kind of like, I'm a, I'm a humble dude. Mm-hmm. I'm just a servant of the most high. I'm here to serve. And, you know, and I, I got to try my best to love myself. But this, you know, I, I'm also very hard on myself and my mind beats me up. And I also, I also suffer, you know, I, I, or I, I allow my mind to put me in positions of suffering. And I try myself to stop it and be like, no, dude, it's all good. But, you know, I'm a human being, you know, I think we all got yeah. our, you know, the Buddha said that, you know, suffering was part of the, of the deal. And we yeah. just got to make the best out of it or, you know, have less desires or, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a human being. And as, as I said, you know, like I am here to serve. I, I was not always positive. Uh, I think I always was good and God inside. But because of growing up in Peru, and which is a macho society in the 80s and the 90s, I was like a terrorist time. And even if I was, you know, well off, Still, every eye is all like kind of like comparing each other because of their uh, material wealth right. or their looks or whatever. And it's natural to, you know, build all these armors. So my armors was like I was in a street gang, uh, which was about a uh, soccer gang situation. So you go to a soccer stadium and you cheer for your team and then you go out and you throw rocks at each other. And oh, I was like a gang member. Yeah, I was like really not only negative, but I was like very destructive. And then when I, my parents sent me to live in Canada at age 17, I was a big drunken bastard, you know, just <laughs> get drunk. I was like that, you know, that characteristic stoner, drunken asshole that's just always fucking shit up. <laughs> Very destructive, you know? And it, I, I, I hit the wall at age 21. It was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, you know you're good inside. Why have you let yourself become this, this being? So uh, what kind of helped me was going uh, tree planting. So in, in Canada... You can do the seasonal job in summer where you go to deforested areas mm-hmm. and you plant trees. Okay. And you plant around like a uh, 1,000 to 2,000 trees a day. And you're just in nature and you think it out and you meet new people. That's the first time I was like interacting with hippies. Um, and it really kind of like gave me a new perspective of like, oh shit, like the planet is this. Like the mud, the insects, the trees. And right. I've only been in these like, you know, fake environments like cities with buildings and egos and religions and et cetera. And it's been confusing me and making me uh, become this guy with lots of armors and, and bullshit to kind of defend myself because inside I felt weak or too sensitive. Uh, so how about we start getting on the path towards dropping those armors and that bullshit and becoming uh, good again, you know, and yeah. it's being, you know, that was age 21. I'm 40 now. I'm still working at it. Hell yeah, man. Um, well, but, uh, you know, I, I, I know the that journey. That, I know that that question is weird to ask if you're proud of yourself, man. And <clears throat> the, I think that a lot of people that do creative things, we're very tough on ourselves by nature. And part of that I think is, helps us in one way get better at what we do and then the other side of it is a hindrance that holds us back and when we can find that common ground where that fine line you were talking about uh, Mm -hmm. between being proud of yourself and confident and and then being cocky and an asshole that there's real power in that and that's that's where the Mm -hmm. love can come through is is through that channel because Mm-hmm. I don't think that Aya or any other substance or 
or headspace or God is out there going, I don't know if I can do it. I know that that thing is all confident and has no mm-hmm. doubt. Right. It, it doesn't exist. Right. There. And so right. when I'm confident in myself and proud of the work that I'm doing and I know that it's doing a good thing, now I'm open to that channel and, and that thing is coming through. And I think mm-hmm. after talking to you now, that's what I saw and felt in looking at your art is that that mm-hmm. vibe coming through, man. And, and it's it's an honor, dude. It's an honor to meet you and and to to get to talk to you. And it, it's really thank fucking cool, man. It, it I feel like we made a friend tonight and and uh Oh, thanks. It's, it's awesome. Man. <laughs> I don't even know what you guys look like. <laughs> but that doesn't matter. No. But it, it's fun that way too. Yeah. It is fun that way. Uh, <laughs> um, if you ever come to Portland, man, you've you've got a home to come hang out at. We'll cook you some oh, food right. and you hang guys out. are in Portland. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna be in Portland for uh four twenty. Oh wow. Oh shit. We'll be yes. here. Yes. We'll be here. Yeah, it's a dispensary. I can't remember the name, but it's a cool dispensary where a bunch of street artists have painted the walls. And they want me to paint it, and uh, they'll make an event on 420 where I'll be the life painter or something. Oh, wow. we'll have to we'll have to okay. hook up, man. Yeah. We'll yes. have to hook up. That's a big wow. time up here. I'm in the cannabis industry, and 420 is a big thing up here in Portland. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, so maybe once they come out of the, you know, they announce it. Uh, then you'll hear like, oh, that's where Chris okay. will be at. Cool, but unless you know a, a, a dispensary that has tons of like a murals, there's a woes, there's, uh, I don't know if you know a street artist, but yeah, this, you know, hopefully they'll promote it properly where you guys hear about it and then we'll get to meet in person. Cool. Oh, I'll, I'll find it now. I'm the kind of the research yeah, Apple, guy. Apple I'll, I'll find it, it tonight, which dispensary you're talking about. And we will, we will well, come see you, brother. Well, they haven't announced it yet, you know, we're still like in conversations. They said, like, ah, we're going to make it happen. They're just trying to get their, their budget aligned. Yeah. But I oh, think yeah. it, it seems like it's going to happen. Um, oh, the, the girl that's hitting me up, I remember on Instagram, her uh, her tag is Blunts and Roses. Instead of Guns and Roses, Blunts and Roses. There you go. <laughs> Apple, Apple, you're yeah. on it. Um, uh-huh. Do you have anything <laughs> coming up, Chris, that you want to tell everybody about or announce or anything like that? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I got a bunch of stuff happening. Uh, I guess I'm going to teach a workshop at Cosm, which is Alex Gray's oh, spot wow. in New York. That's in May. Uh, I'm going to be in a bunch of festivals and events throughout the summer. I'm getting married in September. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. Oh, thank you. Then I'm going to be traveling to Ireland, I think, Holy in July. Shit. And then Colombia in November. Then I do my yearly retreat in the jungle in December, which is a retreat with art where I teach art and we do ceremonies. That's in uh, in Tarapoto, Peru. And then after that, I'm going to be at the Global Eclipse Gathering in Patagonia, Argentina. So that's going to be spectacular. I've been to the last two Eclipse Gatherings in Australia and Oregon. Well, you guys might have been there. We were you here. Guys are so close. Yeah, we were here. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, so I do stuff. I'm on Instagram and people can tune in and be like, oh, that's where Chris is at. Right now, I'm kind of just laying low in Peru with my family. Uh, it's it's kind of tricky because there's so much I could do. I got to say no to most of it. Like, for example, <laughs> I this month I could have been at Demi Jam and then Envision and then taught workshops there. But I got to keep on saying to people like, no, 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 no. I got to just chill out and be by myself too or if yeah, not you need time i'm gonna go crazy <laughs> yeah man i get it I, you know, mm-hmm. I gotta kind of like just sit down and work on one painting for myself may it sell or not it doesn't matter i gotta i gotta do my thing and and yeah i'm happy that my parents now got this environment where i can kick it with them and just be in nature like how lucky am i oh, so i, I want to come to peru every year and spend uh, a few months uh, nurturing this place and nurturing them and, you know, just uh, enjoying the blessing. So thank you for taking an hour with us yeah, man. because sharing yeah. that uh, time no with us. It, it flew by, yeah? I yeah, know. Fuck yeah. Well, I don't want to take your time, but gosh, I really enjoy talking to you and just listening to you, actually. Not even talking. Yeah, I know. You have no <laughs> you have a lot to say with your voice and with your hands. So 
I, 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 I yeah, I, I appreciate, I'm an appreciator of what you do and thank you for being so bold yeah, and man. strong to, as to put it out there with, um, yeah, all, thank you all of I it. wish I could, I got to learn more about you guys and stuff, you know, well, kind of like, it's you know, all good. selfish in the situation. It's like, it's that what we wanted. Here. It's kind of nice that way. <laughs> well, if you well, want to, if you want to see what our, what our mugs look like, go ahead, go we'll, look we'll send on, you no, it. no simple road. You on know, you're on Instagram, Instagram. so I will send it to you. Yeah. We'll send you, we'll shoot you yeah. a picture. Yeah, hey, man. send me a, a selfie if you, you guys got it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we could do that. Right? Yeah. All right, Chris, you, you have a good rest of your day, man. Enjoy your break, and I can't wait to see what you do when you come back out, brother. And I'll let you know when this drops and all that. And congratulations yeah, again on getting married, man. Wow. Yep. Thank you so much. All right, Chris, we'll so talk to you. See you guys. We'll talk all to you right. soon, man. Have a good one. Take you care. You too. Wow. That Aww. was something else. Yeah. I love that. I feel like that interview was like, like the coziest granny blanket. Yeah, that like was it, like, super cool. I felt like pillows or warm or like you felt his love. Like you, you all, feel he, everything he was yeah. talking about, his love and positiveness. It was what a and, sweetie. And at the same time, there's something about that accent that's very appealing. Mm-hmm. And the whole the whole time too, I hear like Roddy y- Gabriella in the background in my head, like playing the music in the <laughs> or background. Or like that Santana song. He's in hey, Peru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> like like festive, but not hey, overboard. You know, kind of like you know what struck me about him. Everything. Well, most of all, is uh, confidence with humility. Mm-hmm. That is what struck yeah. me. <clears throat> that that's super fucking rad to behold. That's a cool thing to see in somebody else because it's a hard thing to find in yourself. Yeah. That's a, yeah, like to he was him saying, it didn't that, even seem like a thing. Well, he's, but he, if you heard what he was I, saying, I he's heard, done the yes. work. Yeah. To get there. And it's not easy. And it's, it's a cool thing to see it realizing itself in somebody else. Like yeah. that's what that looks like. Like, well, and listening to him talk, because we've talked to several people and we've discussed and read things and whatever about ayahuasca. He made me feel com- not like he like n- no one's supposed to encourage you to do it. No, but, but he, he made, made you me feel more comfortable it. Oh, with it. Like him, way different he addressed about it. he addressed like the shit. Like like I had to think for a minute. Like you know, hey, great, hey, you could shit yourself, you know. But <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? We need to no, don't shit yourself because it's dark. Man. Then you're gonna be sitting in your shit. Like like he made me feel like you can still if you do or go about it right. You have. You have control of those things, well, but you need to let go. Just the way he explained everything. Thing, it was with was such ease very, and, yeah. and comfort. Yes. And well, like, he didn't even mean to reassure us of anything because he wasn't trying to convince us. Oh, and he has no way. We didn't ask him like, like oh, is ayahuasca cool? No. It's just, he, He's soothing. He shared himself. He's so soothing, you know? Hold on. We're going to yeah, take hang, a picture. Hang on a second. All right, we're back. We took a picture. Anyway, yeah, far out, man. That was... Thank you so much, Chris. If you listen back to this, that made me feel so comfortable and safe and warm. He made me feel safe about the future. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And he's, but he's our age, well, my age. Like that's and it, and the way he's, rad. He to me. he. Well, I mean, obviously he is his art, but like I said, I mean that that explained because I was looking at those like trying to pick. Like trying to pick a favorite, it's like they're all no, fucking no. right. No, each one is a, is, is a, it's yeah. an individual he story. Like is beyond any of those kinds of things. Favorites, you know, it's like a, it's he, weird. I, I had he, a th- right. yeah, I had a thought while we, we were talking, and I, I, I mean, all I have to go on is my own experience. But like in psychedelic space, I've had moments of complete understanding, and like you get it. I just. I'm in myself a hundred percent. And then over time it, it you lose it. It it kind of disappears. You feel like you can't, it's like a remembering a dream, you yeah. know? And I think, I mean, this is coming from somebody that has absolutely no experience with the substance, but it seems to me that doing the ayahuasca ceremony kind of erases that dirty window for a while yeah where you you're learning yeah, to move it's not in, a short no you're learning to move in both worlds at the same time instead of being in the other world it, and then coming back to this and one. incorporation yeah. instead of a, a, a look into mm-hmm. yeah. when it sounds like a lot of things too, it's not something that you 
like you do once and it's it's something it's oh, like, one and done no yeah no it, it's like the it's thing like is it has to call you therapy. that's why people will literally fly to peru they, they have to gather all the money if you're not from peru you know like they have to gather all this money and time off work and it, explain it to the close people that they love and all these things like you have to really be do the dieta. called to do this yeah. and so those people that are called to do it they definitely have something to bring back from that experience whether it's just a story whether it's a book whether it's a painting whether it's telling a friend and or then just that, feeling better or exactly it's well like the self-help thing like he said when that, that, that was kind of my answer months ago when we were and we i forgot who we were you, talking. i know exactly what you're and gonna I, say and i said i said i don't feel the need for i feel fine there's nothing wrong with me i don't need he kind of a dry. He's like, that's how I used to feel. And then I tried it. was like, holy crap. I got a lot of things. I mean, There's like we skeletons all do. in the closet. Yeah. Bro. You, yeah. Build it, you, you plaster it behind that wall and you put up. You're like, no, I'm fine. But we're all not fine. No, so we're it just, not. I don't no, know. No, if that, we were all fine. That, that, that piqued my interest more in like yes, in for Apple. a self-help reason and therapy and a fucking amazing vacation to Peru. With yeah. fucking, come on. All right. Well, <laughs> guys, everybody out there. Thanks for listening this week. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. That wow. was super amazing, fun, cool. I just want to say thanks again. My yeah, God. Chris, thanks. I was blown away. You yeah. was wow. I was wow. I was wow. I was wow. That was another way. Very educational. Very fun to hear. Yeah, him. very educational. And for those of you uh aren't familiar with Chris, well, we'll be doing an intro to this, which we'll throw that in there too. You should go follow him look, on Instagram. And look at his artwork like while you're listening to him talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were That's, both we were well yeah. kind of doing that throughout and the and you 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 feel it Mm -hmm. you want to have an interactive episode of no simple road go look at his art while he's talking you'll Mm -hmm. you'll get something out of it that's what i was doing guys anyway you know what the deal is guys follow us on all the things facebook and the instagram at no simple road and no simple road.com and the gear tab and the merch and the things and the whatnots and the doodads and and leave us reviews subscribe to the show tell somebody about it and guess what Kiss a baby. No, oh. no. Well, okay, you could do that. But tell a friend about the show. Yes, yeah. yes. Tell a friend who can tell a friend who can tell a friend. And, and also soon, tell your friends will. about the Osiris family of podcasts as well. Thank Osiris you to Media. all the new people that have been listening and reaching out to us. What's up? Thank you. Shout out to you guys. Um, we appreciate it. Yeah. Always appreciate new and listeners. We will see you next week with more stuff and things. Get your tickets for Skull and Roses Festival. Get your tickets for Northwest String Summit. Come hang out with the the, the No Simple Road family as I stutter my way through the ending of this show. And I'm Freeze McGee. Pigeons playing ping pong. Mike Gordon. Andy Frasco. All the things. All the things. And remember, smile at a stranger. Get a frog in your throat. <laughs> Ribbit. <laughs> smile at a stranger. <laughs> no. Be nice to each other. Safety third. Hydrate. Hydrate. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Bye. Bye. We'll see you later. You're still listening. I told you it was over. You did it. You no, made it to you, the end. You, we still you didn't. It to it, the it, end there's, there's like 10 seconds left and you're still wondering what's going to happen. It's one of those things like watch it till the credits are over. No, credits aren't over. Darwin? Where's, where's Darwin? Roof. See you later. But it's a tad bit of strange similarities that feed an A equal A complex. The fears of your past do not equal the perplexities of the current road.
listeners, I want to tell you about the April-May 2023 issue of Relics Magazine. It features a Dave Matthews Band cover story with additional articles and interviews with The National, Graham Nash, Wayne Shorter, ALO, Ivan Neville, our friend Eric Krasno and Stanton Moore, Marty Stewart, and much more. Check out the latest version of Relics and subscribe now at relics.com slash DMB. Thanks, Relics. Hi, this is Henry K., host of the number one music history podcast, Rootsland. Come with me on a journey to Kingston, Jamaica, where we explore the world of reggae music and the untold stories of some of the genre's greatest legends. From the ghettos and tenement yards where the music was born, to the island's iconic recording studios. We are so excited to team up with Osiris Media, the leading storyteller in music. Because as you'll hear, sometimes the story is the best song.